Welcome. I've been making a couple different videos on loading Wikipedia onto an iPad and an Android tablet, and I'll put a link in the description of those videos. In this video, I'm going to talk about loading it onto a Raspberry Pi so you can have your own local Raspberry Pi Wikipedia server. So you could put this on your network and you could have all the computers in your house connect up to this single device. So this could be good if you have multiple people wanting to access Wikipedia, or if your internet is congested during the day, and uh, access to Wikipedia is slow, you could download this at night and then use it during the day. Or in an emergency situation, uh, say the internet goes out, there's a wealth of information on Wikipedia that could potentially be helpful, um, being like knots to tie, um, plants that are poisonous, things like that, you name it, um, first aid techniques. So I'm going to put a link in the description to the hardware I'm using, it's a Raspberry Pi 4, and if you use that link, it helps me out a little bit and doesn't cost you anything extra. I'll also put a link to my Raspberry Pi playlist where you can see my other Raspberry Pi projects. So I'm going to have some documentation on my website. I'll put a link in the description of that too. And I'll be walking through that as I'm working on this. So the first thing you need to do is download the Raspberry Pi image. So if you go to the raspberrypi.org, click Downloads. And I'm using this Raspberry Pi Imager software. I did make a video of that. That's on my playlist. Uh, I want to go to Raspbian. And then I'm using Raspbian Buster Lite. So you want to download that. I've already downloaded it. So I want to write that to an SD card. So I'm going to open up my Imager software. I'm going to choose my OS. I'm going to scroll down and click Use Custom. I'll go to my Downloads folder and I'll choose my image. And you can see it's zipped up. I haven't unzipped this. It can handle that zipped up. So there's no reason to um, break it apart. I'll put my SD card in the slot. For SD card, I'll say choose SD card. I'm going to choose this 32 gigabyte card and I'll click write. So now this will write the image. I'm going to speed the video up now. It's asking for my password, I'll do that. Okay, so the image has been written. I'll click continue. I'll close the imager and I can remove the SD card. So now I'm going to switch over to my Raspberry Pi for a portion of this and then I'm going to switch back to my Mac and we'll remote into the Raspberry Pi. Okay, it's loaded. So I'm going to log in here. The username is Pi and the password is Raspberry. Next, you don't need to do this, but I'm going to make my font bigger. Okay, I just made that bigger so it's easier for you to read. So what I want to do is I want to enable SSH and find out the IP address of this. So to enable SSH, I want to type sudo raspy-config. I'll hit enter. I'll scroll down to interface options. I'll scroll down to SSH. I'll say yes. And now it's enabling SSH. I'll hit okay. I'll go to finish. I'll clear my screen. And now I'm going to find the IP address. You want to type IP space A. And I do have this plugged into Ethernet. And the IP address is 192.168.7.206. So you could set this up on wireless LAN also. You could do that through Raspberry config. But now I'm done with the Raspberry Pi right now. I'm going to switch back to the Mac because it's easier to do my screen recording there. And I can copy and paste into the terminal. You could actually type everything I'm saying into the console if you wanted to. I think uh, copy and pasting is a little bit easier. Okay, so I'm back on the Mac now. I'm going to go to my terminal. I'll make that bigger. So I want to log into the Raspberry Pi. So I want to type SSH space Pi at, and then the IP address, and I'll hit enter. It'll ask if I want to continue connecting. I'll say yes, and then I'll type Raspberry. So if you're on Windows, you can use either PuTTY or you can use the built-in Windows 10 SSH client but otherwise it's the same. And the other procedure I did earlier was the same on Windows too. You can download the Raspberry Pi Imager and use it pretty much the same. Okay, so the first command I'm going to run is sudo apt update and then ampersand ampersand sudo apt upgrade. What that will do is it will run apt update. That'll update the package list. And then the ampersand ampersand says if sudo apt update ran, then run sudo apt upgrade. So if anything fails on the update, it won't run the upgrade afterwards. So this is just updating the system so we have all the latest software on here. And I'm also using Buster. 
um, if you're watching this like five years from now, you can try a newer version of Raspbian, but if it doesn't work, you might want to fall back to Buster. I'll say I want to continue, yes. Okay, so that completed. I'll clear my screen. Next, I want to type sudo space raspy dash config. I'll hit enter. So I have some things here I want to change. These are localization options. So I want to change the locale. So I'll go down here to localization options. I want to change locale. And I'm going to scroll down. Since I've made my font big, it's kind of hard to see. I want to go to en. So it's going to be a ways down. And you see en underscore gb for Great Britain. That's highlighted, but I want us. And I want this one here, en underscore us dot utf dash eight. I want to hit uh, spacebar there to mark it. I'll hit tab to go to OK. I'm going to push down to the one I chose. I'll hit OK again. OK, so we're going to go through all the options on the localization page. So I'm going to go to change time zone. I don't know how important this is because, um, you know, it's not going to be saving any information, but I'm going to do it anyway. Um, I chose America. I hit C. Let's see. I should find Chicago here. I'll hit OK. Go back to localization options, keyboard layout. For this one, I'll hit OK. I'll go down to other, OK. I'll go up, no, let's see, I want to go down to English US, I'll hit OK. Now I want to go up all the way to English US, OK. I'm going to choose OK here, OK here, and that's done. One last time, I'll go down here to change Wi-Fi country. I'll hit select, I'll hit U, I'll go down to US and I'll hit OK, okay? Now I'll go to finish and I'll exit out of there. I can clear my screen. So now we want to go to the Kiwix downloads, Kiwix serve. So I have that side up already. Let's see, I'll expand this a little bit, there we go. So I want to go to downloads, server. I'll scroll down here to where you see GNU uh, Linux ARM 32-bit. I'll right click on that and say copy link. Okay, we'll go back to the instructions here. It says wget paste in URL. So I'll go to my site, I'll type wget, and then I will paste in my URL and I'll hit enter, and that will download it directly to the server. I'll clear my screen. You don't have to clear your screen every time, I just do it to make it easier to see. So next we want to type tar space dash zx vf. So this is going to uncompress the file, so z means Compression, X means extract, V means verbose or display information, and F means file. I'll hit space, then I'll type KI tab, and that will fill in the rest of the uh, compressed file we have there. I'll hit enter. Okay, and now I want to move this to USR local bin. So I have this here, I'll probably put this on my website, but you need to pay attention to the version numbers. If it changes, you might have to use a different version number. So I'll type sudo space mv space and then I'll hit ki tab and then dash tab again and you see the numbers are there and then I want to have star space forward slash usr forward slash local forward slash bin forward slash just like so I'll hit enter so now if I type ki tab you'll see these come up as commands like the kiwix serve okay so I'll clear my screen here. Next it says download Zim from this site. So if we go to downloads here, we go to content. If we scroll down on the page a little bit, you'll see that it has the Kiwix wiki. I'll click that. And this has many, many wikis on it for all sorts of uh, languages. There are medical specific ones, you name it. The one I like to use is the simple one. So I just search the page for simple. So I have Wikipedia English, and I use this simple all no pick. So it's about 443 megabytes, but uh, someday I may download the big one. I think there's one that's about 80 some gigabytes, and you can put that on a 128 gigabyte SD card and have you know this huge wealth of information on something the size of your thumbnail. I think that's pretty amazing. So you would go over here and hit download. I've already done that, so it's in my downloads folder. So I have that here. So there are a couple different ways to copy that over. I'll just open up another terminal. I'll go CD to my downloads folder. 
I'll type SCP, I'll make this bigger, and I'll type Wikipedia, I'll type the thing and I'll just hit WI tab, did that, and then I'll type pi at, and then I'll type my IP address, and then I'll type colon, and then I'll type tilde slash, I'll hit enter, it's going to ask me for my password, so I'll type raspberry, and now this will copy it over. So a zim file is like a compacted unit that contains all of the text and or images of the Wikipedia information. It's the whole data set, and it's compressed incredibly well. They use the um, XZ compression algorithm, or compression type program. It's uh, LZMA, I think is what it's called. Okay, so that copied over pretty quick. So that'll probably take a little while to download. So if you're watching this video first, you may want to start downloading that so you have it available later. So we'll go back to our server. I'll type ls, and we see the Wikipedia file there. Go back to my documentation. And I talk about copying it to the server. And uh, I think this is in the wrong spot. Um, I'm going to edit this before I post it. But it says copy to var local. So I'll type sudo space mv wikipedia. And then I want forward slash var forward slash local forward slash I'll hit enter so you can copy or move this it doesn't really matter when I first started my documentation I was copying it now I'm moving it does pretty much the same thing so next we want to create the QX server so I'll copy this line in and this takes us into nano so I will copy this in so this is cutting part of it off but you can see it on my web page but you may need to change this. If you don't put this in a USR local bin, um, you need to change these paths here. And you also might need to change the name of this if you use a different uh, Wikipedia Zim package. So I'll hit Control O to save, Control X to exit, and now I'll enable it. So I'll type this in. It's sudo systemctl enable qx. I'll hit enter. Next I'll copy this next line in. This is sudo systemctl start qx, and now the system is up. So we should be able to go to a web browser now and go to that IP address. And here we have it. We have the Wikipedia Simple English. So if I click on this, it's hosted on the Raspberry Pi, so it's super fast. Now, okay, now what we had here, I should mention that, has this little icon here, and that means there's an external link. So if, you had, if the internet was out, you wouldn't be able to access that, but I can click on any of the other links in here. And this version I have is Wikipedia Simple. So you notice these articles are really small. I'll look someone up here. I'll type George Washington. I typed that wrong. Let me try that again. There we go. So typically if you went to the regular Wikipedia page, actually I'll do that. Okay, so here's our simple page. If you go to the full page, you can see his picture and stuff in it. So if you downloaded one of those larger Zim files, you would have this picture. So from here, any computer on your network can go to this IP address and they can pull up Wikipedia. Now this doesn't auto update. You know, if you're concerned on having the latest information, this probably isn't even the best solution for you. But um, you know, if you wanna have an offline copy of Wikipedia for whatever purpose, um, this is one way to do it. So one last thing we can do is enable overlay FS. So I have a little note here, it says enable overlay FS. So I'll clear my screen. We can type sudo space raspy dash config. I'll hit enter. You can go down here to advanced options. You can go down to the bottom here where it says overlay FS. And it says, would you like to overlay file system to be enabled? And if you say yes here, what'll happen is it'll make your Raspberry Pi a read only system. So it kind of locks it down and then you can just unplug it and plug it back in to turn it on and off when you need to. So that makes the system a little bit more robust. I'm not going to do that right now, but in production I would probably do that. And you can turn this on and off, like later if you want to update it, you can turn it back off. But otherwise it won't save your changes. It is, can be a little confusing because you don't really know it's on. It just works the exact same way, it'll save files, it's just when you reboot it, it will start from scratch and it will have deleted everything that you saved because it just temporarily stores the files you created. So the flexibility of the Raspberry Pi, you can buy an SD card, load Wikipedia on it, take the SD card out, put it somewhere safe, 
And if you ever need it someday, you just slip it in one of your Raspberry Pi computers. So um, that would be hard to do with a regular computer where you have a hard drive or something you got to swap around. Um, this is a real nice solution. And this should also run on any of the, even the tiny Raspberry Pis. So. so that's all for this video. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments. If you like this video, please click like. If you haven't subscribed to my channel, I'd appreciate it if you could do that. And thanks for watching. Until next time, goodbye.